Today is December 5th, 2010. I'm interviewing Charlie Galately at his home in Westbrook, Connecticut. The interviewer is Therese DeLucia. Also present is Hannah Simeone and his wife, Regina. Thank you for allowing me to interview today. My name is Therese, and I am looking forward to hearing about your experiences from Iwo Jima. I hope for the next hour you will be able to share some of your experiences. This is your chance to share your experiences with your family and for historic records through the Library of Congress. So, are you ready to begin? Yeah. Okay. Were you drafted or did you enlist into the war? I enlisted. How old were you when you enlisted? Fifteen. Wow. Were you, where were you living at the time? Uh, I was living in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And, uh, let's see. Uh, I think I was still on Pixley Place. Where were you when you first heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? I was working. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I was a, pr a apprentice bricklayer when I heard about it. Mm -hmm. oh, that's wrong. I'm getting uh, carried away here. What was that? With the laborer for herring there and putting in sewers. That was after the war. No, dear. You told me it was before you went here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. He quit school. He quit school. The thing of she just threw him out of class. <laughs> <laughs> so Pearl Harbor. That's Hopper. right. He was quit school. I okay, hate screw up. It's okay. Oh, what That's was the last question? The last question was, where were you when you first heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? I was still in school. You're still in school. And do you, what, what do you remember of your first days in service? What do I remember? Mm-hmm. About the you first few days. Good or bad? Either one. My first days in service. I went to Sampson, New York. Mm -hmm. We had a boot camp up in Sampson, right on Lake Erie. Mm -hmm. It was like uh, in April. It was still cold up there. Mm -hmm. And put my boot time in up there. But they cut it short because the war was exhilarating. And uh, we got out of that. They shipped us down, back down to New York and uh, up to Rhode Island uh, where they had another uh, Navy station, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was there for a week, a week and a half. They sent me back to New York to pick up my ship which was a brand new ship that I was just commissioned. And then we went down to Florida. We practiced there for a while, uh, landing craft and loading and unloading, and how to operate on a work ship. It was a work ship, really. And uh, in between uh, trips, we uh, painted the decks, chipped mm -hmm. the paint, the jet. Kept her up in shape. It was a brand new ship. And then we were uh, sent to Guadalcanal, not Guad, Panama Canal, mm -hmm. to the Pacific. And I spent the rest of my time in the Pacific uh, doing what we had to do, deliver cargo wherever they needed it, food supplies, ammo, uh, big stuff like uh, distilleries for changing salt water to fresh water, all that kind of stuff. But uh, we had our small boats on deck, uh, which were unloading from our cargo ships into the small boats. They mm -hmm. delivered to the beaches mm -hmm. under fire and without the fire. We all went ashore. 
who never got out of the boats. So the only guys who got out of the boats that were they were blown out. Mm -hmm. We did this under fire. We did this out of the fire. <laughs> and we just kept doing our job. That's all. Two years wow. in the Pacific. So we covered pretty well. China. Mm -hmm. uh, then we ended up going to Japan. Mm -hmm. After we hit Iwo, uh, we were there 10 days. We unloaded our stuff. We were told to move out. We went to Hawaii to pick up a bunch of GI, uh, GIs and uh, CBs. We brought them to Okinawa. We hit Okinawa Easter Sunday morning. Oh, wow. Right after Iwo, you know? Yes. And uh, we, we dropped off these people. Uh, <clears throat> the lower end was where the first landing strip was. They always go after their landing strips. Mm -hmm. And that's where we seemed to get into the most fighting. Because uh, we had stuff to fix the landing strip that we bombarded already. Mm -hmm. And get in an operation as soon as possible even before we secured the island. One of them strips had to be open and available for our planes to come and go as they pleased. Because we were losing a lot of airplanes mm -hmm. from when they bombed Japan. Mm -hmm. And they used to have to go to Saipan and Tiniana land and they, they were always out of gas. Mm -hmm. you'd, get, you'd get over the radio all the time. Mm -hmm. One Plane down, and uh, we couldn't even go help them because it, it, they were in the water. The Jap submarines would just lay around waiting for jerks like us to go save them, you know. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't do much for them guys. I guess they had special. Uh, People standing by at Saipan and Tinian in small boats like we had to go do that job that we could have done because we were right there near them. Okay. Anyhow, that's the way it worked out. Okay. So then from there we went to uh, Japan. Took over Japan. So what was your assignment that you had there? A board ship? Or? Mm -hmm. Yes. I was SEMA second class. Uh, we used to call ourselves deck apes. We did everything, anything you wanted, anything the captain wanted us to do, we did. And that's all. We run the ship. It's from the ship. Which division were you in? I was in the. Center of the ship, let's see, I think it was second division, I think. Because mm -hmm. okay. we only had bow, stern, mm -hmm. and center, you know. Yes. Not like on the big ones. You had to have a permit mm -hmm. permit to go from one section to another. Mm -hmm. you, can you please tell me what you experienced during combat? I'll tell you the truth, I didn't have any time to think about the combat. Mm -hmm. We were too busy. Exactly. We were really too busy. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, you got to get that load off of the ship and into that boat. And he's going to take it into the... Well, he, had, he knew where he had to take it. Right into the beach, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was our main, main thing. Mm -hmm. The guys that worked them winches were out in the open up on, uh, on the A-frames. They, were, they had no cover at all. And they were up there working a, the machines, mm -hmm. pick, the booms and everything, pick up the cargo, lower it into the, right out in the open. One guy lost, a, they blew the calf right off his ship. Like, Saw some horrible things. Um, can, you, can you please tell me a couple of your most memorable experiences from there? Memorable. Oh, 
Yeah, I got a letter from my sister. Mm -hmm. And she said, and <coughs> she told me uh, Bobby, my oldest brother Bobby, uh -huh. who was over in Europe and uh, fighting with the army, he was in the Black Hawks Division. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the war ended over there, they, they put all the people on trains, brought them across the United States, put them on ships and sent them all right into the Pacific. Wow. And uh, Bob was sent to the Philippines. And just by accident, we were pulling into the Philippines. Mm -hmm. After we were there half a dozen times before, fighting, you know, yes. they sent these guys over there to take over. So anyhow, uh, I got permission to go look for Bobby, and I found him that day. Brought him back to the ship, spent the night with us, and they woke him up 3 o'clock in the morning and told him to get off the ship, we're leaving. Met Bobby there. Uh, I saw my buddy Vinny in in the, the harbor of Japan. I went to high school with. What else? Hurt. Hurt. Oh yeah, my brother-in-law. It was in the same deal as my brother Bob. Mm -hmm. After the war ended over there, they sent everything to the Pacific, and he was on a, on a, in the Navy, Art. His name was Art Brennan. Uh, he married my sister after he got done in Europe, and that made my brother -in -law. so they sent him and his ship, the USS Tuscaloosa. Now this ship, he was on, which is a destroyer. I met him in the Philippines. The signalman told me that there was a guy, uh, that the ship was there, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I was buddies with the signalman, signalman on our ship. And I got permission to take a boat and go over there and see him. So I met my brother-in-law. Ah. That's such a coincidence. And uh, another guy I met was, well, we were out in Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> I will forget him. Anyhow, uh, all right, Art Rennie's ship was in World War I. Mm -hmm. It was old ish, some of them bitch was. And uh, it was still being used. Wow, all those years. Yeah. But then the war was over, and uh, we got the final, after we took the guys into Japan, to, we took a bunch of guys into Japan, they were, uh, a lot of them were uh, the, the swimmers, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they went ashore to, to cap all the guns off, so there wouldn't be any foolishness. Mm -hmm. Um, that's about it, I guess. You went back to school. Oh, when I got home? Yeah, I went back to high school when I got Afterwards. home. Afterwards. For two years. Mm -hmm. I took the tests in the service, too, but they lost my papers. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a ball, going mm -hmm. back to high school. After all of that, you have to go, go right back. Teachers told me, so sit over there and keep quiet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, I really didn't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But I should have gotten my uh, diploma anyhow, but they lost all my papers in the Navy. Mm. Because I took all the tests for, <clears throat> for uh, graduation. Mm -hmm. uh, set up they had with the schools, I would have got the my diploma anyhow, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was nice. I was there in person doing it. And uh, I was a good boy. 
<laughs> Were you awarded any medals or citations? Uh, well, I got some medals for the battles I was in. Mm -hmm. uh, only citation I got once. No, I won't go into that one either. <laughs> well, that's about it. Oh, well, now, we were moving the Chinese people. They were fighting during the war. They, they fought all the way down south from the north, you know, mm -hmm. fighting the Japs, mm -hmm. taking back their country. So we were helping to move them back up north to where they came from. And... Uh, We'd pile a bunch of them on the ship and just bring them home. Mm -hmm. and that's all my story. But it was uh, fantastic to go to China, you know, to the China Sea and all that stuff. And uh, not everybody got to do that. Mm -hmm. So that was a big deal in our life. We uh, went to three different places. We dropped them guys off uh, uh, where we were supposed to, uh, up these rivers and pull up their docks. You know the commies were there waiting for them? As soon as they got them on shore, they made them put the ribbon on their arm. Oh, my goodness. Chinese communists. And uh, that was lousy. Yeah. Some of them even started shooting. Right away, as soon as they got their red ribbon. Guys we met, took care of on a ship and talked to, had fun with. They just turned. Unbelievable. Yeah. They just turned like that. Um, well, how did you stay in touch with your family while you were overseas? Well, I wrote letters. Uh, we had that, uh, sometimes send them a letter and they would only get that much of it. Really? Everything else was cut out. <laughs> really? Had to go through the, uh, the upstairs, we call it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mail goes through upstairs and they read it and uh, you can't tell them uh, too much if they didn't like what they read. Uh, like you almost uh, told them where you were. Mm -hmm. Something like that. They cut it out. You would only get part of the letter. Wow, because it's all confidential yeah. information. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me, well, we just finished over there at uh, Saipan, we're going to Tinian. No, they would they cut, it, cut out. it out. So they read everything that you yeah. would write. They read right. it all before yeah. it all went out. Everything was read before we sent it. And it wasn't read by us. Yeah, yeah. so you didn't see what actually got sent. Right. Over. It was yeah. whatever they decided was going over. Absolutely. Well, what was the food like when you were overseas? Oh, we had everything. Mm. Our cooks were the best. They had good. <laughs> we had even, we even had an ice cream machine. Really? <laughs> it was like home. Yeah, that's good to hear. A home away from home. Mm -hmm. Did you have plenty of supplies also? Oh, yeah. Mm. The guys that took over them little islands, they were good. It's still eating out of box lunches, uh, uh -huh. K rations, C rations. But if you sit down and think about it, when you sent, sent thousands of guys into one little island to fight to get that island back, mm -hmm. which was what it was all the way up, and uh, you had to be supplied with ammunition. Mm -hmm. You had to be supplied with food. This made the job bigger and bigger and bigger. The more, more you went down the line, there were ships all over the place, airplanes all over the place, boats running around with food in them. And these guys had to be fed. Yes. You know, when they first got on the islands, and uh, it depends on how fast they could take it. It's when they had a got a meal, their next meal, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Might have been 10 days, might have been a month. Mm -hmm. 
They were eating them out of a box, uh, K rations, C rations. But uh, they had to be sly. Oh, yeah. Supply, I mean. It, uh, an operation was huge. You wouldn't believe how huge. There'd be ships all over the place. Oh, my God. Just bringing in stuff, artillery. Uh, Constantly. More men. Yeah. You know, get, as soon as you get down here, mm. you gotta go to the next time. Do the same thing. Mm. Uh, did you see the flag go up? Oh, yeah. I saw a flag go up, I mean, with you. I couldn't miss, I was standing right there. Mm -hmm. uh, I never thought it would uh, lead to this. Uh, so it was a great thing to see. But the enthusiasm isn't there like it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, you were glad it happened. And it was great that day to see it go up. Matter of fact, uh, it was my birthday too. Really? March 4th. The first flag, March 4th. Yeah. And, uh, Turned uh, seventeen. Okay. Well, that's about all I can say. Yeah. Um, was there something special or significant that you did for good luck, or something that you had kept with you for good luck? No. No. How did people entertain themselves? Throughout the day? Oh, throughout the day? Or during the time? <laughs> well, we had movies once in a while. Um, mm -hmm. We pulled like into Saipan or even Guadalcanal. We went all the way down to Guadalcanal with the uh, empty shells that we picked up from the different destroyers and uh, they had an ammo factory going on down there, so we delivered those, and uh, we were having movies on deck one night, and we got attacked by submarines in the dark, mm -hmm. and we had to shut everything down and mm -hmm. clear, clear the ports. They don't want you sinking your ship in the port, because mm -hmm. it would screw up the movement of wanted stuff, ammunition, machinery, and, uh, well, that's about all. But we did have our movies. So it's a big part, movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was our only, uh, relaxation. Mm -hmm. Get your mind off of yeah. what was going on. Do you recall the day that your service ended? Yeah, uh, partially. Uh, the, the, the boatswain mate was running around trying to get us to sign over because they were already mm -hmm. ordered to go to China with another mm -hmm. uh, thing to do. Whatever they did, I don't know because I didn't delve into it. So I asked the guy, he wanted us to sign over, you know? Yeah. Because I was. Uh, I was on the list of guys that got out first because I only signed up for the duration. Mm -hmm. The guys that were drafted and that were there before me, they had to wait their turn. But we came first because that's the way we signed up for the oh. duration. The duration was over. Oh, I see. So they tried to get us to sign back to go to China. We're going back to China, you know, big deal. I says, hey, I gotta sign up for how long? He says, at least two years. Mm -hmm. If I up, signed up. And I said, well, two years. I said, 
I'm a Seaman second. I said, you give me third class, you know, and one red stripe would, would be a petty officer. Okay. And the guy says, can't do it. I said, I can't sign it then. That's all. Mm -hmm. I came home. Okay. Wow. I wasn't going to go sign up for nothing no. again. Yeah. I went through the whole world with nothing. Exactly. The guy wouldn't even give me third class petty officer. Hmm. It was like in a race. He wanted me to stay. That's all it was. Yep. Well, I don't know what they were thinking about. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the cash. Yep. And you're a second class seaman, you don't get too much, especially if you're sending a lot of the biggest part home to your mother. Mm-hmm. Very true. So, I didn't sign up. Yeah. I came home, went back to school, got done with two, two more years. That was nice, though. Had a ball. Yeah. Did you make any close friendships when you were overseas? Oh yeah, whole ship load. Good. Did Most you? Of the guys were rebels. Yeah. Yeah. All of them had guitars. <laughs> All of them sang. Drank like uh, drunkards. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Did you continue any of those relationships, or are you still friends with any of them today? I had a couple of guys where you, we used to call. And. Uh, on the phone, you know, uh, even they die out, you know. Mm -hmm. But the attack boats. What about them? Ed Brisboy. Oh, Ed Brisboy, yeah. Brisbane. He's right up here in Massachusetts. Uh-huh. He's, uh, he was, uh, he drove an RC, uh, an LCM, and uh, it was pretty hefty and most stuff, and he's a member of our monument. Okay. And uh, he goes back and forth between uh, Florida and uh, his home in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, that's about the only one I keep in touch with. Mm -hmm. What did you go on to do as a career after the war? I took up laying brick. My father was a bricklayer union, and I he got me in the union, and I took up laying brick, mm -hmm. and it was a good job. Mm -hmm. It was good money. <laughs> Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? I don't know what you mean by influence. influence. Did, like, your thinking about war after you came back, was it different than before you went into war? Not really, because I never thought about going into war. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I don't know, there was a lot of people that couldn't probably get over. Mm -hmm. you know? Why them Japs pull a dirty trick like that? And how did your services or your experiences affect your life? I don't think it had too much of an effect on me. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else you would like to add that we have not covered in this interview? Probably if I sat here for about an hour thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Right now, nothing. Okay. Were there any pranks that you or others would pull when you were overseas? <laughs> <laughs> You're asking the wrong one. <laughs> Depends on what we were doing, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of it, I guess. Uh, there wasn't too many. Not too many. We were... 
My ship was never in a position like that where we had time to think about a prank. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, thank you so much for sharing everything. You gave me a lot of great insight into your experiences. Your time is very much appreciated and valuable.